Rachel, take a look behind me. A small group of protesters just over my shoulder amongst a heavy police presence. And over on this side, parts of this street are even blocked off just by City Hall. This is coming to us after Saturday's protest that remained largely peaceful up until late last night. The mayor now calling for calm as the protests continue throughout the country and right here in Baltimore. Guys, there are thousands of people. This group has been slowly moving through the city for the last two hours now. And right now we are under I-83. This is somewhat of a bottleneck. This is towards the end, but not quite the end of all of this. Hundreds, possibly thousands of young people have come out for this march. It is a youth-led march. You see the folks who are out here, many of them are extremely young. Many of them are very young. And perhaps the fact that we are out of uh, college right now and out of high school because of the pandemic, many of these kids are able to be here. So we want to walk you around and show you what is happening right now. So this is on Gay Street. If we continue to walk up here, you see how many folks are here, but I want to show you what's happening. You mentioned this earlier just now in the top of the show. This right here is the on-ramp towards I-83, I-83 North. And many of the folks are slowly making their way onto I-83 right now. Initially, we were told that they may link up with other groups at police headquarters, but clearly they've diverged and now they're going in another direction onto I-83. We're not quite sure how police are dealing with this because clearly they will be blocking traffic. Officials are probably blocking traffic ahead or behind so that the protesters aren't walking into any potential danger. But this, for us, is a new development. We had no idea that they would be passing City Hall, passing police headquarters, and heading up here onto I-83 to the ramp. So in 2020, we saw unprecedented protests highlighting police brutality with calls from everything from reform to defunding all the way up to abolishing the police. And uh, Baltimore was no different than anywhere in the rest of the country. A bit of a raw subject here, to say the least, with the name Freddie Gray being fresh in the minds of Baltimore denizens. We report from Baltimore, where the governor of Maryland has declared a state of emergency and the mayor of Baltimore has announced a week-long curfew beginning tomorrow night, a curfew that cannot come soon enough. Tonight, we have witnessed lawlessness and chaos on the streets as the violence escalates despite calls for peace. All this in the wake of today's funeral for a young men who died of severe injuries while in police custody. Baltimore is burning after a day of looting and rioters clashing violently with police. Tonight, a community center in flames lights up the city as police and community activists try and take back the streets. In my neighborhood. Lost to chaos earlier today. Many politicians, including the sitting president, actually made police reform or even the radical rhetoric of abolition part of their campaigns. They ran on this issue. I know, I know progress can be slow and frustrating. And there is a concern that the reckoning on race inspired two years ago is beginning to fade. But acting today, we're showing that our dear friend, the late John Lewis, Congressman, wrote in his final words after his final march for justice in July of 2020, he said, Democracy is not a state. It is an act. Democracy is not a state. It's an act, an affirmative act. And today we're acting. We're showing that speaking out matters, being engaged matters, and that the work of our time, healing the soul of this nation, is ongoing and unfinished and requires all of us never to give up, always to keep the faith. I close with this. Over two years now, for over two years, we've gotten to know one another and pray with one another, not figuratively, literally. I promise the Floyd family, among others, George's name is not just going to be a hashtag. Your daddy's name is going to be known for a long time. But as a nation, we're going to ensure his legacy and the legacy of so many others remembered today 
It's not about their death, but what we do in their memory that matters. The purpose. Just a few moments, just a few moments, I'm going to deliver on that promise when I sign the executive order. And Kamala and I will continue, along with our friends in Congress, to get meaningful police reform legislation on my desk as best we can, as quickly as we can, beyond what we're doing here, affecting states as well. I'm about to sign Advancing Executive Accountable Policing and Criminal Justice Practices to Enhance Public Trust and Public Safety. And uh, since I only have one pen, you're all going to get a copy of this. <laughs> I don't have to do one stroke at a time with each pen. <laughs> Despite these promises of change from the politicians, we've seen more of the same as police continue to use excessive force and kill innocent people. In fact, in 2022, police killed almost 100 people a month, the highest number of people killed by police on record. Happening right now, the family of Donnell Rochester is protesting outside uh, Baltimore City, new Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office, Ivan Bates. We are told that the group of protesters tried to walk inside. They were stopped by security. 18-year-old Rochester was shot and killed by officers in February of last year. Now, the Baltimore State's attorneys cho at the time chose not to file charges against the two police officers involved. And we'll have much more on this story tonight at 7 o'clock. We were told that the protests and the subsequent government action would lead to change when things have remained the same. In fact, a lot of these politicians who ran on this issue seem to have completely reversed their position on it. I want to say this as clear as I can. There's no place in this country, no place, for endangering the lives of law enforcement. No place. I'm opposed to defunding the police. I'm also opposed to defunding the FBI. We're told repeatedly that the issue is actually that the police are not capable enough and that the solution to that problem is even more taxpayer money and even more surveillance and oppressive technologies when we've seen time and time again what the effects of those measures are so maybe it's time to rethink the role of police in society <laughs> 